<laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, take a picture real quick. Yeah, that's, <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's pretty cool right there. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. I want to welcome you guys back to episode 8 of the JBJ 65 gallon reef build. Now as always, quick reminder, if you're new to the channel, you stumbled across this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now to make sure you stay in tune. And if you're already subscribed, hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any future updates or random live streams. Now, I also want to remind you guys, in between YouTube videos, I do frequent updates, you know, quick shots on my Instagram at CJ's Aquariums. Feel free to slide over there if you want the live and current, or at least most current updates on the tank. So, with all that being said, we are finally back on the road. We are finally visiting some LFS. It's been roughly a year at this point since I walked into any fish store. I got to tell you guys, this was kind of bittersweet. I was so glad to you know walk into aquatica which is my local lfs right around the corner from my house pretty much my number one go-to place only to find that it was not in the same condition as i last seen it so it's kind of one of those situations to where it definitely is bittersweet but for those that are wondering what exactly is going on highly recommend go slide over to rico's aquariums channel he actually drove down and visited me this weekend and he did a great interview with the store owner and really get you guys up to date on what's going on in the state of the hobby and how it's affecting these LFS. So go check that video out. Now, as we continue our LFS tours, I want to remind you guys of one major factor. In the city of Louisville, Kentucky, where I live, there's only two LFSs that I'm actually aware of. One is going to be Aquatica, which is where we just left, which unfortunately is going to be closing down soon, which really is bad, bad news for me. And second, is going to be Sandy's Pet Shop, which is where we are now. The only difference between the two is Aquatica specializes in saltwater only, and Sandy's Pet Shop actually covers everything. So you have fresh saltwater, you know, live animals, dogs, rabbits, birds, everything you would want in a pet store itself, which in this case, I think it's probably helping them because when it comes to the selection of fish and the selection of corals, everything is harder to find you know i heard about it you know i read about it but i haven't really stepped into any local lfs and so finally seeing it in person and walking into a store where i knew a price for a piece of euphilia was you know 50 bucks or you know a great deal back in the day and back in the day meaning only a year ago is now almost triple the price you know, fish is more expensive, corals are more, you know, expensive. So it's kind of a situation where you hear about it, but seeing it in person really makes it hit home. And it almost makes me wonder why no one's talking about it anymore. Like it's not happening anymore. You know, there's so many people that's wanting to get into the hobby at this point. You know, I hear messages all the time from personal messages or people saying, hey, they're excited about the new tank. They're excited about getting in the hobby and i don't think anyone's really paid attention to just how hard it's going to be to stock your tank so you know this definitely was an eye-opening trip to the lfs luckily i was able to grab a few items you know to add to the jbj but this definitely let me know that stocking this tank is going to take a lot longer than i realized you know one it's going to be the lack of core availability and two it's going to be the pricing you know, it definitely is going to cost a lot more to stock this tank than I realize. So we're going to take our time and hopefully get this thing done sooner than later. Now, I got to admit to you guys, it has been a very long day. You know, touring the LFS, speaking with Paul over at Aquatica, the store owner, and hanging out with Rico's Aquariums. I definitely had a chance to talk a lot about the hobby and kind of gain a little more perspective on what's going on, the reality of what is going on in the hobby you know the state of the hobby so to speak and i gotta tell you guys bluntly for anyone that's new that's joining i think this is honestly the worst time to actually join the hobby to be setting up a new tank exactly like i'm doing and i say that because i'm used to things being different i'm not a guy that's been in the hobby you know 20 and 30 years but the last five years I've been in the hobby and the last four tanks that I've set up, I've always had corals readily available. You know, walking in, special ordering them or just, you know, just walking in and finding a deal. 
I just knew I can find corals. And now knowing it's going to be a lot more difficult, it's kind of changed my perspective. It's kind of changed my ultimate plan for this tank. Uh, it's going to change, you know, what I'm going to do as far as livestock. It's just going to change everything. So, you know, with that being said, just want to put that out there for anyone that's new that's wanting to join. Consider your sources that are locally available and consider your game plan. You know, are you going to be primarily shopping online? You know, paying top dollar for things being shipped that you could potentially not see first? Or are you going to just rely on what's locally available? Now, the great thing is, you know, all of the corals that I broke down and sold from my previous builds were all sold locally. And I think that's where the hobby is going to survive. So if you're going to be joining the hobby, I would suggest that you join a local reef club, a local something, you know, that has hobbyists around you that you can actually share trade corals with and just keep it going because at this point it's not going to keep going from the business side the hobby is going to have to stay alive from the love side meaning the love of the hobby itself and just the love of the community so just kind of putting that out there as far as my new perspective at least you know until things change that's pretty much gonna have to be something to consider for everyone moving forward so let's take a moment and talk a little bit more about what's going on in the jbj you know you guys have watched me kind of add the livestock to the tank now i'm shaking some random bottle you know what the hell is cj doing we need answers right well to be honest with you guys this is my first time using this fritz turbo start 900 it's basically you know a bacteria in a bottle an instant cycling kind of nitrifying bacteria that you should be able to add to your tank and cycle it, right? Well, keep in mind, I have been adding this to the tank slowly over the last couple of weeks. You know, knowing that there are dead organics on this rock that we're breaking down, you know, I did have an ammonia source already available. So why not kind of kickstart it and let this bacteria build up, you know, get its numbers up and before I added the fish to the tank. And even after adding fish, I hit it with another shot of bacteria, you know, just for good measure. So it's one of those situations, never used it before, but I'm going to be glad to either confirm or deny if this stuff works. You know, we're going to test the tank out. We're going to make sure that the ammonia levels are safe. You know, that I'm getting nitrates and no nitrites. And we're just going to try to confirm if this is the real deal. So at this point, guys, we are finally ready to go in the JBJ 65. This is a couple days later, livestock starting to settle in, everyone's eating, and water is crystal clear. I don't know if the camera's picking up how clear this glass is, but that's something worth noting because it almost looks like the fish are floating, and I'm hoping I can keep this quality of clarity in my tank, you know, moving forward through this build. But before we get too far, I want to make sure I address, you know, the elephant in the room. It always rears its head at this point, and it's the question of quarantining. And I'm just going to say this, guys, I've kind of spoken about this in the past, but my thoughts are simple. Murphy's Law rules everything. Quarantining versus not quarantining. There's tons of argument both ways, but the only thing I've seen in common with both options is everyone still loses fish sometime or another. And at this point, you know, I'm not in a situation to where I'm going to be able to quarantine fish, coral, you know all livestock i'm adding to the tank the proper way to fully try to prevent something from happening so i'm doing my best to select options that are the healthiest i can see that are eating and like usual rolling the dice so if you're going to quarantine make sure you quarantine everything if you're not going to quarantine just try to be smart with your fish selections and just at the end of the day stuff happens you know, it's a situation to where you do your best to avoid catastrophe, but understanding that in this hobby, some things may not be in your control. And you just kind of, kind of keep doing what you do, right? So that's what we're going to do in the JBJ. I'm going to do my best to avoid any issues, but for now, everything looks good. So let's take a quick look at what fish I've actually added to the JBJ. Now, the first one I'm going to share with you all is going to be this red flame hawk fish. For those that have followed my channel, you guys are well aware. It's been one of these, you know, clumsy swimming, grumpy, goofy looking fish in every one of my tanks. I just love these little guys, man, to be honest. You know, despite all the risks, the shrimp and, you know, the risks of aggression, 
I just love the personality, the character, and the red color of these fish. And I'll probably have one of these in every single one of my tanks. Now, when it comes to the inverts, I'm testing out one cleaner shrimp for now. As you guys know, you know, cleaner shrimp sometimes, you know, fall victim to flame hawkfish. But I've also had cases in the past to work and keep these guys successfully. But this is going to be a tank that may not be very shrimp friendly. But that's part of what I do. Trying to pull off the impossible. So we'll see if this works out. Now another fish that I've pretty much had in every single reef tank is going to be a flame angel. Can't beat the color. You can't beat the activity level. The only thing that's always a risk with any dwarf angel is the coral nipping. Now I got to tell you guys with my experience with my previous JBJ and the 120 gallon. I've tried a ton of different dwarf angels and I've always had luck with flame angels. So I know everyone has different experiences with this, but once again, this is another situation of will it work? Well, we'll have to find out. But until something goes bad, expect to always see a flame angel swimming around, cruising in the tank, especially if I have an all in one this size especially if I have a JBJ. And the last two fish I'm gonna share with you all are gonna be these Wyoming white clown fish. Love these guys when I have my 120 gallon so much that I wanted to have them again. So expect these guys to be permanent residents in the JBJ 65. Now I do wanna add to one question I'm sure is gonna come up as well. And that's gonna be related to the microfauna in this system or in this case, the lack of microfauna. You know, I started this tank with basically dead live rock, so it has not been seeded with any copal pies or anything yet. But to be honest, that was not my master plan, guys. The ultimate plan was to have this tank fully seeded before adding fish. But as with every other package that was supposed to arrive on this tank, the post office lost it. So, you know, unfortunately, I'm still waiting on that replacement package. But in the meantime, I wanted to go ahead and add some livestock to keep the bacteria happy and to keep the cycle going. And I was selective with making sure I did not add very pod heavy, you know, hunt you down and eat all your microfauna type fish, also known as wrasses. So, you know, between the fish I have in here, adding the pods later at a later date, you know, during the dark, making sure nothing can eat them should be perfectly fine. Now, when it comes to the equipment, it is around the time to start firing up my skimmer, you know, my algae scrubber and start paying attention to my nutrient export, you know, my lighting and just making sure I keep the cycle going and don't run into any potential algae issues. So, you know, we'll cover more details on that later. At this point, I just kind of want to give you guys an update on the JBJ. We got livestock, baby. You know, the tanks running. We got fish. And we are well on our way. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and kill this video. And as always, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing. Peace.